Today we are going to talk about factoring special patterns and factoring by grouping. By the end of this video, you should be able to factor special square and cube patterns, and you should be able to factor by grouping. First, let's review some important vocabulary. First, we have the word factor as a verb. This means to rewrite something as a product. GCF is an abbreviation for greatest common factor. This should be the first thing that you do in every factoring problem. An expression does not have an equal sign. You simplify expressions, you do not solve expressions. An equation does have an equal sign and you do need to solve an equation. First, we're going to start by reviewing factoring out the GCF. In this first problem, we have 2x squared plus 6x. So we want to factor out the GCF or undistribute. So I'm going to look and see what 2 and 6 have as a common factor. Both 2 and 6 can be divided by 2. So I know that there is going to be a 2 in my GCF. When I look at the variables, I have an x squared and an x. So I can factor an x out of both terms. So my GCF is going to be 2x. To see what I have left, I want to divide both terms by the GCF. So if I divide 2x squared by 2x, I'm simply left with x. If I divide 6x by 2x, I'm left with 3. You can always check your work by redistributing. So if I take my answer and I distribute 2x times x is 2x squared, 2x times 3 is 6x. That's what we originally started with, so that means our work is correct. In the next problem, we have 5x cubed minus 10x squared plus 5x. Again, we start by looking at the numbers to see what their common factor is. So 5, negative 10, and 5 have a common factor of 5. Then, if we look at the variables, we have x cubed, x squared, and x. All of those terms have x as a common factor. So then if I divide all of the terms by 5x, 5x cubed divided by 5x is just x squared. Negative 10x squared divided by 5x is negative 2x. And here's where you have to be careful. 5x divided by 5x is 1. You should always have the same number of terms as you started with when you're factoring out the GCF. In the third problem, again, we want to look at the numbers and see what their greatest common factor is. So we have negative 3, negative 15, and negative 18. All of them are negative, so I can factor out a negative number. And the largest common factor of 3, 15, and 18 is 3. When I look at the x's, I have x squared, x, and then no x's in the last term. So I cannot factor out an x. So negative 3 is my greatest common factor. If I divide all the terms by negative 3, I'm simply left with x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, problems 2 and 3 can actually be factored more, but we won't learn how to do that until next class. Now let's look at the special pattern for squares. You can only factor the difference of two perfect squares. So if you have a perfect square minus a perfect square, that is going to factor into a plus b times a minus b. But if you have 
the sum of perfect squares, that is two perfect squares added together, you cannot factor that. So we say it is prime. So let's look at a couple of examples. In our first example, we have 4x squared minus 121y squared. So I need to figure out what is being squared in each term. So in this first term, 4x squared, that is really just the quantity 2x squared, because 2 squared is 4 and x squared is x squared. In the second term, I have 121y squared. 121 is 11 squared, and clearly y squared is just y squared. So I'm going to take 2x and plug it in for a, and 11y and plug it in for b. So my factors are going to be 2x plus 11y and 2x minus 11y. Okay, And we can always multiply them back together to check. Remember when we are multiplying two binomials together, we have to double distribute. So to check, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 11y is negative 22xy. Positive 11y times 2x is positive 22xy. And 11y times negative 11y is negative 121y squared. The middle two terms cancel out, and I'm just left with what I started with. Number five is a little bit more complicated. If I look here, I have x to the eighth minus 256. Now, x to the eighth is the same as x to the fourth squared. And 256 is 16 squared. So I can write this as x to the fourth plus 16 and x to the fourth minus 16. But we have not completely factored this because if we look carefully, x to the fourth minus 16 is still the difference of perfect squares. x to the fourth is x squared squared and 16 is four squared. So we can continue to factor that one. However, x to the fourth plus 16 is prime, so we can't do anything else with that factor. So x to the fourth plus 16 comes down, and we have x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 4. Again, we have the same type of situation. x squared minus 4 is still the difference of perfect squares. x squared is just x squared, and 4 is 2 squared. x squared plus 4 is the sum of perfect squares, so that is prime. So again, we're going to bring down the x to the fourth plus 16 and the x squared plus 4 and then x squared minus 4 can be factored into 
x plus 2 and x minus 2. And that is our final answer. You can, of course, multiply them back together to double check, but I'm not going to take the time to do that. Our last example on this slide is 25z squared plus 9. Since this is the sum of perfect squares, we know that this is prime. Let's take a look at our special patterns for cubes. You can factor both the sum and difference of two perfect cubes. So our first five perfect cubes, one cubed is just one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, and five cubed is 125. So if you have a perfect cube plus a perfect cube, the pattern for factoring that is a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. If you have a cubed minus b cubed, then b is just negative. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. On this first one, we have 8w cubed plus 27. 8w cubed is 2w to the third power, because 2 cubed equals 8, and w cubed equals w cubed. 27 is 3 cubed. So we just need to plug in 2w for a and 3 for b, in our pattern. So I'm just drawing some parentheses here first, and then I'll plug my numbers in. So A is 2W, and B is 3. Now to simplify this, the first parenthesis is still just 2w plus 3. The second parenthesis, 2w squared, you have to square both the 2 and the w, so you get 4w squared. 2w times 3 is 6w, and 3 squared is 9. So this would be the final answer to problem number 4. For problem number five, I need to start by factoring out a GCF because both two and 250 can be divided by two. So if I factor out a two, I'm left with z cubed minus 125 q cubed. So in this situation, z cubed is the same as z cubed and negative 125q cubed is the same as negative 5q to the third power. So I need to plug in z for a and negative 5q for b. So I'm gonna have z plus negative 5q then I'm going to have z squared minus z times negative 5q plus negative 5q squared So to clean this up a bit, I have z minus 5q times z squared, then 
minus z times negative 5q is going to be plus 5qz plus, and then negative 5q squared is going to be 25q squared. And then don't forget to bring down the 2. That was our GCF. So that would be our final answer for number 5. Let's look at one more example of factoring difference of perfect cubes. So here, 64x cubed is 4x cubed. Then negative 1 is the same thing as negative 1 cubed. So if I plug 4x in for a and negative 1 in for b, I have 4x plus negative 1 times 4x squared minus 4x times negative 1. plus negative 1 squared. So then to clean this up a bit, I'd have 4x minus 1 times 4 squared is 16, so 16x squared minus 4x times negative 1 is plus 4x, and negative 1 squared is 1. So that would be our final answer for that problem. We have one more situation to look at. What if you have a cubic that has all four terms? That would be an x cubed term, an x squared term, an x term, and a constant. So this is called factoring by grouping. First, we need to draw our parentheses. So I am going to group this polynomial into two binomials. Then I'm going to factor out the GCF. So I want to look at the first parenthesis, 2x cubed plus 6x squared. Well, I can divide both 2 and 6 by 2, and I can divide both x cubed and x squared by x squared. So 2x squared is my GCF for the first parenthesis. If I factor that out, I have an x plus 3 left. Then for the second parenthesis, I can divide both 5x and 15 by 5, so I can factor out a 5. And if I do that, I'm left with x plus 3. Then the third step is to factor out the GCF again. So if we look closely, I really have two terms here. I have 2x squared times x plus 3 and 5 times x plus 3. So what do they have in common? They both have an x plus 3, so I can factor that out. And if I factor that out, I'm left with 2x squared plus 5. So my final answer for this problem is x plus 3 times 2x squared plus 5. And we can check our work by double distributing. So if I multiply x to both terms in the second binomial, I get 2x cubed plus 5x. And then if I distribute the 3 to the second parenthesis, I get 6x squared plus 15. So by rearranging the terms, I end up with exactly what I started with. 
So we have checked our work. Let's look at two more problems. For number seven, we want to start by drawing the parentheses to divide the polynomial up into two groups. The GCF of the first parenthesis is going to be a squared. And if I take out an a squared, I have a plus seven left. The GCF of the second parenthesis is going to be negative three. And if I factor out a negative three, I have an a plus seven left. So when I look at these two terms, they both have an a plus seven in common. And when I factor out a plus seven, I'm left with an a squared minus three. And that is my final answer for number seven. Number eight is very similar. I need to start by drawing my parentheses. If I factor the GCF out of the first set of parentheses, that GCF would be x squared and I'm left with 2x plus 1. The GCF of the second parenthesis is negative 9. And if I factor out a negative 9, I'm left with 2x plus 1. If I look at these two terms, they have a 2x plus 1 in common, and I'm left with x squared minus 9. But on this problem, if I look closely, x squared minus 9 can be factored farther because that is a difference of perfect squares. Because I have x squared minus 3 squared. So my final answer would be 2x plus 1, and then x plus 3, and x minus 3.